What's up, ranchers? I'm Monkey Mike. This is Monkey Ranch, and thanks for joining me today. We have the Abomination, my compound turbo Miata, and we're doing cam swap from a Kia Sophia. If you've seen the previous video, you saw me show you the B60 head that I had pulled from a Kia Sophia. Now, there is some crucial information in this video that you're going to want to make sure you stick around for. This is not a way for me to get you to watch the whole thing. If this is an interest to you to do this modification, I highly recommend watching the full video and getting as much of this information as you can out of it because I did run into a few hiccups, one of them being a timing issue. So I do believe this cam is slightly different than the one that is in the MX-3. Uh, everything's in, it runs. Runs good. Did a little launch in the driveway. It works great. For those asking why I don't do those on the street, first off, it's illegal and I don't want trouble with law enforcement. Second off, I have a big enough driveway and I can control the car good enough that I don't have problems with launching into the garage like this. Um, and it's easier to test stuff at home like that. That way if it breaks, you have a shorter distance to go. I didn't know what was going to happen. I don't think I'd ever actually launch the car that hard, and I only launched at like maybe 4,000, 4,500 RPM. We still have a lot more to go, and I also had a boost leak um, because, because this little guy back here actually broke off while I was doing the cam swap. I really hate these stupid plastic PTFE whatever type lines. The cam angle sensor is maxed out, and that's something we're gonna deal with. So make sure you stay tuned, and I will do my best to show you about swapping this cam. It, the timing really was one of the most frustrating parts, and that's because I actually ran into an issue, and we'll address that later on. So stay tuned, here we go. And here we have the compound turbo Miata, known better as the Abomination, getting its cam swapped from a Kia. That's right, you heard it. We are swapping a cam from a 1995 Kia Sophia. So this is called the X intake. I hope I said that right. It's basically you're just taking the uh, front of the exhaust and you're putting it on intake and we call it an X intake because this is technically an exhaust cam from this B6D head. Now it's a little known fact, the B6D was also in the Kia Sophia. Most people look for this cam in a MX-3. Now the Kia Sophia, it's gonna be 95, 96, and 97 are the only years you can find it. And it's gonna have a distributor, so it's gonna look weird. A lot of people always look for the cam angle sensor thinking that that was the only slot that fit. But that is factually incorrect. I've tested that in one of my other videos, but I'm going to show you how to install it and get it all running today. So bear with me. This is my first time doing this, and we're going to do it together. So as you can see, I've got most everything staged taken apart. The tools to do this are fairly simple. You just need a 10 millimeter extension. I used a non-ratcheting wrench. Uh, I also have the extendable. You can see I've got all, everything pulled apart. The reason why a spark plug is out is so we can check TDC, which I already have marked right here. You can see on my fluid damper, there's two marks. This one here is gonna be what marks TDC. I've already checked it, and we'll verify that later when we go to put everything back together. We need to make sure that TDC is where it's at to mark the cam for the new place that it's gonna be at, because obviously we're using exhaust cam and it's gonna have to be 25 teeth off in a weird direction. and. Just stay tuned, you'll get that info. All right, so the cam is installed. When you tighten it, you wanna start on three, five, one, four, and two. Now I did 150 inch pounds on my torque wrench. This has been calibrated. I actually checked it against these cam bolts. And I just slowly stepped it up until it matched these cam bolts. I have found discrepancies online. One person said 21 foot pounds, which is way too much. Everywhere else I found set up to 100 to 125 inch pounds. So I figure it's a good compromise at 150 inch pounds and it feels great. Now, as you can see, I've got most everything reassembled. But one of the things that I wanna show that matters the most is the way that the timing works on this. The E mark, there's a line right here. And this is where you would normally line it up. Up. You can see how the E is up here and the I is down. Well, that's because this is the E for the exhaust side. Normally, the I would be up and the E would be pointed at this little piece right here where there is an E in the, transcribed or pressed into this little plate. And there's an I on this side. And you can see here, the I is facing this little nub that sticks out. And this is now where our new white mark right here, where I just use some random white acrylic paint. So what we do is we're gonna count nine teeth from this mark right here. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then we're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna go 25. So if we start here at nine, this is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And then we're gonna do our same 19 teeth in between our new mark and our stock mark, and that's where it's gonna be. You can see I have that set at top dead center. That's gonna be this first mark right here. I do have the spark plug out, but there's really no reason to show you. You could easily just put this in here, wiggle it around. You would see that it is at top dead center. So all that's left to do is reassemble the engine, start it back up, and then we need to set the Base timing. Now to save myself a little bit of talking over top of the engine while it's running, I'm going to show you guys how to hook up the timing light. So it's just right down here on the alternator positive. Make sure that you're not touching anything else that's going to, because you see I have my oil line right there for my cooler, my relocation kit, and I don't want that thing grounding out on that because, well, that's all going to the engine. It's, it's all metal. So make sure that it's not touching anything, but you are connected to the positive terminal on the alternator. And we're going to go ahead, find our negative here, make sure we're not wrapped up too badly in our wires. And I just attach it here, you can attach it you know, here, here, really anywhere. I just attach it there because it's nice and easy. And then we've got good access to our wire here, which like I said, try to, try to make sure it doesn't do this. All right, make sure everything is out of the way. And then we're gonna go ahead, take this, and we're gonna wrap it around here. For me, I need to get this insulation out of the way. And this, uh, you know, the way I have everything makes it kind of difficult. But this right here is essentially what you're after. And we may need to wiggle it around a little bit to get the signal. And then this is where we're going to be checking our timing at. Right here, this big line, this is the T. And this big line right back here is going to be the 10 degree mark. So every one of these should be two degrees. So it should be two, four, six, eight, ten. So what we're after is it's going to be two notches back, which is hard for, hard to see on this. We're looking for two notches back. I keep seeing it here on the 16 mark when I have it set at 14. So we may be two degrees off on the timing. And again, I believe that may be from where the dowel is drilled in on the alignment pin for the camshaft, which is something we can deal with once we have a degree wheel and a adjustable cam gear so that we can move it more minute positions versus only one tooth at a time. I have it set on the proper teeth. If I were to change one tooth, the, tr the timing would be dramatically different. It would not be 16. It would be probably higher, probably worse. I want to make sure that I show you guys what I did to remedy the same situation in case you decide to swap this Kia cam and you run into it and you go, you know, hey Mike, why is it I'm seeing 16 degrees when everyone said 14 degrees? Well, this may be why we find out the small difference between the exhaust cam on the B60 Kia head versus the MX-3. So again, I have checks. This is maxed out as much as I can possibly adjust it. There is no more amount of room, so I can't get any more retard out of the timing. Meaning that if you go this way, it'll advance the timing this way to retard it. Because, you know, if we could go this way more, we would lower the timing. All right, so here we are after everything is all said and done. And typically I don't like to show my spark maps, my fuel maps, stuff like that, because I don't want you guys to copy them, have an issue due to the discrepancies between my engine is built completely different than any other Miata that I know of. I run way lower compression and I'm about 8.8. .8 if I did my math right, it's either 8.7 or 8.8 .8 to one compression. And I run gobs of boost and I'm currently on 91 octane, which I will be switching that soon so we can run more timing. But I am going to show you what I did to remedy this cam to be able to work. But the dowel pin, I believe is in a different location, which gives the cam a slightly more aggressive profile. And that would make sense because currently, it's really hard to get it to focus, but I am running 16 degrees as a base timing. And then I actually have it down here. It's at 15 on the low side, 16, and then I jump up to 18, 19. Let's see if you guys can see that there. Um, and then I, have, I had to get extremely aggressive outside of boost 
I mean, that's not extremely aggressive in consideration to how it normally is. I mean, that's that's a pretty aggressive timing map for being on 91. Um, I did pull a lot up top, and the reason I did that is because, well, I just haven't tuned for it yet, and I don't know what it's gonna act like, and it's safer to pull timing, add fuel, run a little rich, deal with knock as it comes, versus having an issue. So the whole reason I did that driveway launch was to actually just kind of get an idea of whether or not it was responding well, to listen to the engine. Though, you know, we have have the ability to do these data logs and stuff and uh, dyno tuning is great and everything. I don't like how dyno tuning simulates loads. I prefer to be on the street. I prefer to do more real world stuff, what I'm actually going to put the car through. And something like that launch would be more or less what I would be putting the car through, having the weight of the car shifting around, things like that. And so it sounded great. We ha I had no knock at all. There was no detonation. I couldn't hear anything. It, it ran fantastic. You can hear it in the video. You tell me if it does burnouts. <laughs> I barely even touched it in the video. It did great. Um, so that gave me a basis of where my fuel map should be, that I had everything set fairly well. We never went lean. It stayed pretty good around 12 to 13 on the AFR. Uh, I'd have to go back and look at it. And again, this is where data logging is important because then I could look and I could see where the RPM and where everything was. And I recommend data log as much as possible. The car <laughs> runs just fine. It works just fine. Everything, the way I do things works for me. Okay, and I'm not advocating that you guys copy exactly how I do stuff. I'm just showing you guys what I do. So hopefully this stuff helps. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I appreciate y'all being here. If you have any questions, throw it down in the comments below. Make sure to go check out the merch store if you like anything you see. Support the channel. Uh, like, subscribe, all that stupid stuff. I, I don't even know why I said that. I usually never say that. So it's whatever. Just thanks for being here. I appreciate y'all. Laters.